47, but we understand that it might have been a 747. And of course, as we told you earlier, the president wasn't anywhere near Camp David or the White House or the Pentagon when this happened. He was in Sarasota, Florida, speaking to school kids. He's on his way there now. We're going to hear from him in just a little bit. Um, we're getting late reports right now that United Flight 93, which was en route from New York to San Francisco, has crashed in Pennsylvania. This may or may not be the same plane that crashed near Camp David, but that is the number of a plane, 93, from New York to San Francisco, which has also gone down. Of course, the FAA has stopped all flights around the country, as we've told you, and LAX being evacuated as we speak. American Airlines did confirm that uh, Flight 11 from Boston to LAX was one of the planes used in the terrorist attack. Uh, we were anticipating a news conference about 10 minutes American Airlines. We have not heard yet whether they have held that news conference. We do understand from what Larry McCormick told us that 58 passengers were on board. What do you have there, Emmett? Uh, we were also getting some of the first numbers that we've had so far. I mean, given the some yeah. of the first numbers of the people who have died, and here it is, American Airlines officials saying that two of their flights were hijacked uh, and crashed in today's attacks. Not sure about the third plane that hit the Pentagon. The airline says that 164 passengers and crew members were killed on those planes. And that number will of course, uh, continue to rise as we look at pictures from the ground. Try to get the, the, uh, the sense of the enormity of the collapse of these towers as you look at it from the ground up. Uh, if you stand right beneath the, uh, the and look up, you can't see the top of the building. They are that tall, and they, they are overwhelming. Can you imagine what it must have been like to see that building come down? Uh, it just it is mind-boggling, absolutely mind-boggling. This all began just before our time, when I was on the set, and we of Tower One having been slammed by a commuter plane and to think what it must have been like to have been in that building or anywhere near it. And the only thing I can hope, I pray, Tower Two was evacuated before that second plane slammed into it about 20, now, 20 minutes later. Now there are many, many uh, elevators inside those buildings. I'm not I recall how many elevators there are inside those buildings. Those are very, very fast elevators. Under normal circumstances, they could probably uh, evacuate a great many people in a hurry. No telling whether the elevator shaft was damaged and whether anyone could get out of there soon enough to, to uh, get away from, uh, A, the, uh, uh, the fire and the smoke, and, uh, and then eventually be able to get out before that building collapsed. Uh, what is this? We're wondering if this is uh, tape. Uh, the, uh, the plane that slammed into the Pentagon. Uh, this is again, this is videotape uh, in Washington, D.C. This is not live pictures, but we were looking at videotape that's being sent to us. Again, uh, information and video coming to us from various sources uh, uh, here at, at KTLA, and we were watching uh, Washington, D.C. as uh, the White House was being evacuated uh, uh, earlier this morning, uh, the West Wing. President Bush indicated that he'd been in contact with Dick Cheney. Uh, there you see uh, an F-16 flying overhead. Uh, earlier we heard reports that an F-16 was, uh, had a, a, a team of, uh, a squadron of F-16s had, had uh, tailed a, uh, another hijacked aircraft. That has been un, uh, not confirmed. But there you see kind of the chaos and pandemonium of Washington, D.C. So many incidents coming in. You're looking at the Pentagon here now live. So many incidents coming in. So few real details. So few confirmed bits of information that we have coming in, only to know that there have been four plane crashes, two that have hit the Twin Towers, which have now been demolished. They are gone from New York skyline. The Pentagon, which you see here, another plane that you presumably just saw a couple of minutes ago on that tape that we fed you, the Pentagon now, a portion of it having been collapsed, the White House evacuated, Pentagon evacuated, federal buildings evacuated, and then another crash that was near Camp David in Pennsylvania. And we're not quite sure what airline that was or how many people may have been killed there. President, not in attendance. All right, uh, you're probably wondering what is the effect here in Los Angeles? What, if any, effect is, is this having on Los Angeles? And Eric Spillman is at the command center in downtown L.A. Are you at Parker Center, Eric? Yes, I am. But uh, right across the street from here is what they call an emergency operations center. 
that is where all the police and fire department agencies get together to coordinate their activities in case there is an emergency. There is no emergency here in Los Angeles as of yet, but they want to pre be prepared. So as a precaution, they activated the emergency operations center at about uh, 7 o'clock this morning or so. It's a level 3 activation. There you see some of the officers going inside this morning uh, from representatives from uh, all over the city, from the police, from the fire department. Uh, they have their level three activation, which is the highest level. At 10 o'clock this morning, they're going to have a meeting with all the, the depart, uh, department heads and the chief of police uh, to talk about precautions that, uh, that they can take. Now, we understand that no buildings in Los Angeles have been evacuated as of yet, but the police department has gone on what they call citywide tactical alert. That started at about 6.15 this morning. That means that all officers are being told to stay on duty. Normally a shift would uh, would leave. Officers would be going home around 6.15 or 6.30 in the morning, but they were told to remain on duty, and this gives the police department more officers, more resources in case anything should happen. Other things that are going on here this morning, we can tell you that we've seen some security precautions put into effect around City Hall. Some of the entrances to City Hall are locked this morning, and they're checking people's IDs and badges on their way in just to make sure nobody's going in who doesn't belong there. We've also heard reports that some buildings in downtown Los Angeles have been evacuated, unconfirmed at this point, but KNX Radio is reporting that the Arco Towers, or it's now owned by British Petroleum, was evacuated in an orderly way this morning, and some other buildings downtown may also have been affected uh, just as a precaution again this morning, people being told perhaps you should not come to work, maybe you should get out of the building. But again, those reports are unconfirmed at this time. So we'll send it back to you in the studio for now. Eric, there's, uh, officials are saying there's no reason for us not to feel safe but uh, they're taking all the precautions just in case. Absolutely. We've asked over and over and over again, have you received any threats that relate to Los Angeles? And their answer is, no, we have not. Uh, but they want to be just uh, as secure as they can be and as, as safe as they can be. So the thing to do is to coordinate this emergency response, get everyone in place where they need to be, and then if anything does happen, they'll be ready. And Eric, I guess we have to tell parents too, I mean, this is a school day. The schools here in Los Angeles are going to be open but no extracurricular activities. So I'm assuming that means soccer practice and or band practice, anything that Recess. doesn't have, right, going outside, right. anything that doesn't have anything to do with school. Let me interrupt. Uh, we're not sure whether this is uh, the President of the United States arriving in Washington aboard Marine One or not. That, that looks like uh, Marine One, but it's, it generally does not fly solo. It's, there, it's generally accompanied by two or three other uh, uh, helicopters, uh, so we're not sure whether or not the president has made it back to Washington, D.C. Uh, we did see that uh, helicopter landing, uh, I believe, near the White House. But again, uh, uh, that it appears to be one of the helicopters that they use in the Washington, D.C. area to patrol, so perhaps it is just a patrol aircraft uh, hovering around the, uh, the strategic area uh, of, uh, of the White House and uh, they were looking live at the Pentagon, uh, the smoke continuing to billow from one side of the Pentagon. And as you know, if you've been watching us, the president was in Sarasota, Florida, speaking to school kids when this all happened right around 6 o'clock our time, perhaps just a few minutes earlier. And he gave a speech from there vowing to defend our borders and vowing to go in and get whoever did this, if we know who it is right now, the DFLP, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, has claimed responsibility but I'm sure we're going to find out a little later on exactly who's responsible. He is now on his way, the president, to Washington to give us further details on what he's going to do. George W. Bush faces a task that has not faced the president, uh, perhaps since uh, Harry Truman or FDR. Uh, his father, uh, George Bush, of course, had uh, Iraq to contend with, and uh, Bill Clinton certainly did not have anything of this magnitude happen during his presidency. Ronald Reagan, uh, of course, faced the... Uh, the, the, uh, the red threat, uh, the threat of the Soviet Union, which collapsed while he was president. So uh, President George W. Bush now will gather the uh, information that he has in front of him and have to make some pretty uh, uh, grim decisions about what he needs to do as president of the United States to respond uh, to this terrorist threat. And perhaps a, a lot is on his mind as he is uh, arriving in Washington, D.C. this morning. Well, certainly, Carlos, there's no script for what's been written here. We've not 
encountered anything like this on our soil for quite some time. Folks, if you're standing by, LAX has been evacuated. We assume cordoned off. Willa Sandmeyer is out there, so let's check in with her. Willa? Good morning. Yes, uh, LAX has been completely shut down. No flights will be coming in. No flights will be going out. That situation at least until 3 o'clock this afternoon. And we're going to show you what you're seeing here are many news people, not too many passengers anymore. Arriving passengers, when they found out they wouldn't be able to get out, uh, they pretty much uh, went on home. And, uh, Bob, if you want to just pan over to the left, I mean, you see that we're here up on the second level here. Uh, this roadway nearly completely, nearly completely empty. Uh, a very high profile of law enforcement here. Just a few minutes ago, I saw what appeared to be a law enforcement helicopter overhead. We understand the administration building here at LAX. The administration building evacuated uh, as a precaution. Non-essential uh, personnel have been sent home. What about flights coming into LAX today for uh, family or friends who may be expecting loved ones to arrive to LAX today? Those flights are being diverted to Ontario, Canada. Not Ontario here in Southern California, Ontario, Canada, all inbound flights. Uh, really just a sense of shock and disbelief among the many passengers I talked to, both people who were arriving and people who were planning to depart today. Just. Uh, just unbelievable, almost unable for their minds to comprehend all that has happened already this morning. And uh, unbelievable that all of this could happen on American soil. I heard that over and over again from the passengers that I talked with. Uh, one woman saying, you know, you always would feel safe that you're in the United States. You just don't expect this type of thing to happen. So, uh, as I said, a very strong law enforcement presence here. Very few passengers now milling about because most people uh, know that they're not going to be going anywhere through LAX today. Reporting live at LAX, I'm Willa Sandmeyer. Back to you. Willa, any word from uh, the folks at American Airlines? Have you been able to reach any of those people there? You know, uh, no one from American Airlines has come to speak to us. Uh, they gave a phone number, and I know that our assignment desk has been trying to uh, reach them, but no one has come out to give a statement. We're still waiting for a statement from a public affairs person here at LAX. That person has not yet materialized. We do understand that the uh, FBI, I believe, is setting up some sort of a command post at another location, not where we are. Uh, Gail Anderson is going to check that out, uh, sort of a command post to, to uh, put together a strategy to decide what needs to happen here to keep LAX protected, uh, what sort of additional steps may be taken. But again, the uh, LAX completely on lockdown. We have not heard any uh, anything from an American spokesperson here, no. Okay, and as soon as we get information from the uh, people at American Airlines, we'll of course pass that information along to our viewers. Willa Sandmar reporting live from LAX. Thank you very much. Again, if you are planning to, uh, to take a trip today, uh, you will have a very difficult time doing so. The, the airport is in lockdown until at least 3 o'clock this afternoon. And no telling what the schedules will be and what uh, uh, parameters the airport will get from the federal government as to flights in and out of any city in the United States. As we look at tape now from New York City from earlier as the World Trade Center uh, towers collapsed as a result of the two planes that uh, uh, were flown, hijacked and then flown uh, into the uh, the towers and then causing those towers to collapse it uh, in, happened, in lower Manhattan. It happened as we were watching, as a matter of fact, Carlos. As we were on the air, the first plane, which was headed from Boston, was Flight 11, American Airlines, headed from Boston to LAX, flew into Tower 1 and caused a fire there. The second plane was headed from LaGuardia, flew into Tower 2. Both those buildings now collapsed. And then the third aircraft flown right into the Pentagon, the north end, which has collapsed. All those areas evacuated. And adding to this, Heathrow Airport has been closed. All the flights that are coming here from overseas have been redirected to Canada. All our domestic airports have been closed, cordoned off. All the federal buildings have been evacuated as well. And New York police are now saying, this report straight out of New York, this is the wire copy I'm reading, they say that the number of casualties from today's attacks on the World Trade Center could be in the thousands. As we said, the capacity of the World Trade Center is somewhere in the neighborhood of 50,000 uh, people that could uh, work or live there in the uh, World Trade Center. Now, uh, effect on Los Angeles County, uh, the courts, LA County courts are, uh, are closing. Uh, our people have been asked to go home. Um, we've also heard the reports of the Southern California Gas Company, uh, the headquarters building in downtown LA on 5th Street, 60-story uh, building, uh, has uh, been closed and people sent home uh, from work and will not uh, be, uh, wait further instruction on when when they should come back. The Wells Fargo building, uh, the, the, obviously the tall 
cylindrical building that's uh, the, really one of the, uh, the landmarks of our city uh, has been evacuated and closed uh, on this day as well. We're getting information now just coming in, not exactly knowing how reliable this is, but we must give it to you as it comes in, but the radical Islamic Jihad movement. They're apparently telling Reuters news agency that these attacks are a result of the United States Mideast policy. Earlier we'd gotten reports from overseas that the DFLP, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, was the one responsible for these attacks. Osama bin Laden has been implicated. Now one can only imagine the uh, absolute terror that uh, passengers were feeling on board the plane as uh, the plane was high, two planes were hijacked uh, and both planes were used to uh, slam into the World Trade Center. We understand now that we have a different angle of that plane striking the second plane. Now you see it coming in from the bottom of your screen, the left-hand side, striking the tower that had not been hit before. You see the plane go into that uh, tower and explode, virtually cutting the building in half. And you see the debris flying and the, the explosion that ensued. Uh, just a horrific attack after the uh, first attack that struck the building on your right. Uh, these uh, buildings have been reduced to rubble, uh, subsequent uh, explosions and fire inside the building. Uh, not sure at this point how many thousands of people might have been inside. Uh, there you look at it again in, in uh, regular motion and you see the explosion, or that's still slow motion. But uh, again, a different angle from what we had seen previously. Uh, you can see the clear blue skies uh, over Manhattan this morning now covered in smoke as a result of a deadly terrorist attack. And this happened just before 6 o'clock our time here, which was 9 o'clock New York time, so it's horrifying, shuddering to think of how many people may have been in the building at the time. Of course, the first attack happened just before 6 o'clock. The second attack, perhaps a half hour later, only hoping once again that the second building, which was in fact Tower 2 of the World Trade Center Twin Towers, was just, evacuated. It, it was six o'clock. Uh, it was six o'clock our time, nine o'clock New York time. So yeah, pretty much everyone's at work. Uh, in New York's an early city. Everyone gets to work early. Uh, they're either on the train or in a cab on their way. Uh, there you see a, another angle. This is the the new angle. If we can drop the uh, graphic, there you see the plane coming in low. We're not sure which one of the planes it was that went in. Whether it was uh, the the flight from American Airlines or not, or this was a flight from New York. But uh, nevertheless. Um, you see that just slicing this uh, this building in half. You mentioned a bunch of the buildings downtown here, the Arco building, Wells Fargo building, others that have been voluntarily evacuated at this point because Southern California and California in general has been put on a state of alert but not necessarily at risk. Uh, we're getting word now that Disneyland and Knott's Berry Farm have also been evacuated and shut down. Just unbelievable video, just incredible. When you look at this and you, you wonder what, what to dastardly wicked mind could conceive of such a horrific attack on human life and as we heard from the uh, expert uh, there is no reasoning with these terrorists there is no no logic to what they do only that uh, in fact that they want to inflict as much pain and they certainly have on the United States of America this morning American Airlines is now saying both planes crashed into the World Trade Center were heading uh, unfortunately heading to Los Angeles and uh, we're still getting numbers as to the number of uh, people and passengers and crew on board both planes, both apparently American Airlines aircraft. There you see the aircraft again coming in and striking uh, Tower 2. That would be Tower 2, and this flight was going from LaGuardia, from what we've been told, unless this information changes because the details are sketchy, this was going from LaGuardia to LAX, and we're told 114 passengers were killed on this flight. The and flight the other that struck Tower 1 was flight 11 from Boston, Boston to Los Angeles, and there we were told 156 crew members and passengers were All right, killed. we understand that there's a briefing underway. Let's go to it live and get the information we can from there. That, I don't know what that means. doesn't mean have any connotation here at Logan Airport. What about planes that are flying in here? Are they being rerouted somewhere else? Fly, uh, aircraft were, were flying into Logan Airport. Uh, we did take some arrivals, but now since the airport has shut down, uh, these flights will be diverted to uh, uh, Canada. They're not taking flights either. Are you screening? We're, we're moving to another area, yes. We're watching a briefing They're from uh, Logan International Airport in Boston. We're not sure whether this is an American Airlines spokesman or an airport spokesman. Let's listen in. 
leaving the airport? No. How long do you anticipate that the airport to be closed? It's indefinite this time. Um, we're just, uh, we'll be meeting with the FAA. We'll be conducting an uh, analysis of our intelligence that we have. We'll make a determination later on this afternoon. Pardon me? I can just tell you uh, briefly, uh, we, we have shut down uh, security checkpoints. We've moved everyone away from the boarding gate areas. We've increased uh, police presence dramatically. Uh, we've uh, requested additional state police be sent to the airport. Um, and we've uh, shut down some construction activities around the airport. Is this the highest level of security ever just? I can't confirm or deny that right now. Is there anything unusual about the boarding procedure? Logan International Airport has not been hit by any terrorist activity that we know of, other than the fact that uh, one of the flights that was used in the uh, attack on the World Trade Centers originated in Boston and was en route to L.A. That was Flight uh, 11, and Emmett has the additional flight numbers of the flights involved in uh, this morning's terrorist attack. It's, uh, it's so difficult to coordinate, but here we have what we believe to be the final, the final tally on what hit what this morning. The first flight was, as you mentioned, uh, American Airlines Flight 11, and that was going from Boston to Los Angeles, and that hit Tower 1. That was the first plane to hit one of the towers of the World Trade Center. Tower 2 was hit by American Airlines Flight 77 from Dulles to Los Angeles. Both of those planes headed to Los Angeles. Now listen to this. That's the plane that hit Tower 2. Listen to this. United Airlines Flight 175 from Dulles to Los Angeles, we believe, was the plane that hit the Pentagon the north end of the Pentagon, which has been evacuated. And then the fourth plane to crash, and this one near Camp David in Pennsylvania. United Airlines, Camp David, not in Pennsylvania, but this crashed near Camp David. It crashed in Pennsylvania. United Airlines Flight 93, and that was going from New York, Newark to San Francisco. It certainly does not escape anyone's uh, mind at this point that uh, all of these flights were headed to California. Uh, three to Los Angeles, one to San Francisco. As we look at the Pentagon live, uh, the activity surrounding the Pentagon, uh, much of the activity, of course, now taking place in uh, secured bunkers uh, beneath the city of Washington uh, in areas that uh, are secure and uh, one would presume safe from uh, terrorist attack and terrorist threat. But there you see the activity outside of the Pentagon this morning uh, with ambulances, fire uh, equipment, and uh, personnel attempting to uh, find their way out of the, uh, the Pentagon. We have not received any information as to the number of, of injured uh, or killed uh, in the Pentagon. We've not received any credible uh, figures from uh, the World Trade Center uh, situation. We may not know that number for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, we will uh, certainly bring you as much information as we can throughout the day. We are going to continue to stay on the air uh, throughout the morning here on KTLA and bring you as much information as we can as uh, you watch along with the rest of the world, what is happening in New York City and Washington, D.C., and throughout the world as uh, the world is on heightened alert as a result of a deadly terrorist attack on, on Manhattan and uh, Washington, D.C. this morning. We're even getting reports, you mentioned, around the world that some of the other countries are in sympathy with us, certainly, but heightened sympathy. Russian President Vladimir Putin has expressed his condolences to the uh, American people about these attacks. He calls them terrible tragedies. Jacques Chirac of France says that this is monstrous, these attacks. And he's expressed solidarity with the American people. And even Yasser Arafat has gotten on the air, a somewhat embattled Yasser Arafat. One cannot know how much he is in actual knowledge of what may have happened here. He's certainly politically stuck in the middle between his people. And we don't know how much help he's actually going to give us in finding who did this. Now, he's come in and out of favor among uh, the terrorist groups, uh, at times uh, siding with them, at times uh, being, appearing soft uh, to the terrorist groups. Uh, and he, you're right, he's, he's kind of stuck in the middle, but it, uh, as one terrorist expert put it this morning, he has lost pretty much all of his credibility in, in the wake of what's happened uh, this morning. And uh, now, I mentioned earlier the, uh, uh, the effect that this has had on the United States when you consider that back in 1941 when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor it was a surprise attack by a country in an act of war that killed uh, 2,400 uh, uh, sailors and military personnel in the harbor of Pearl in, in, in Honolulu. Uh, 
As many as 50,000 or more people could be dead as a result of this attack. But there is no nation to attach to this. So what are Pre President Bush's options here in a terrorist attack? That is th the big question at this point. What is President Bush going to do? What will be the response of the United States of America in the wake of such an attack that's really unprecedented in our, in our world history? Uh, a, a terrorist attack not attached to a particular nation. Now we have these groups that have claimed responsibility, the DFLP, the uh, Islamic Jihad, who are, are saying that the, this is a as a result of the Mideast policy. Uh, our Mideast expert, our terrorism expert, indicated that this was uh, clearly a, a way to get a message across. Well, this is a huge message. This is a message of, uh, of uh, catastrophic proportions that is being sent around the world, and everyone now is paying attention. Right. And what the response is, is what President Bush really, it, it, that's, that's we must wrestle with in the next few hours. Right, it's true. And I mean, what you're saying is absolutely correct. There's no way to know exactly how to put a finger, how to stamp this out. Uh, we already thought that we were on alert. We already thought that we were this sort of attack and putting up security measures that would stop this from happening. But I think even more immediately for folks at home, it lets us know how vulnerable the sane are to the lunatics, to the people out there who may at any time choose to strike out and strike out at large numbers of people. Well, 21 years ago today, um, there was an accord. It was the Camp David Peace Accords. And you can see that it has virtually uh, done nothing to prevent uh, a terrorist attack of this magnitude. This was uh, the anniversary. Today. Then. Today is the 21st anniversary of the Camp David Peace Accords. Wow. Which, of course, was heralded uh, as the beginning uh, of the end of this sort of thing. But, of course, who could have imagined the magnitude of this attack? We also understand that, uh, as we indicated to you earlier, President Bush uh, was in Sarasota, Florida this morning, uh, addressing a group of school children on education. Uh, he is heading back on Air Force One and heading to an unidentified federal Air Force base, uh, not to Camp not David. In, not in Air Force Base. Yeah, and we assume that he's not going back to Washington, D.C., or anywhere near the nation's capital as a result of the, uh, the threat that is still lingering there in Washington and as a result of the attack on the Pentagon and other uh, explosions that have happened uh, near the State Department and elsewhere. So at this point, uh, we don't know where the president is going. We don't know even where Pres Vice President Dick Cheney has been uh, evacuated to. As I understand, he was in the, uh, in the West Wing or in the White House at the time of the, uh, the attack, but uh, that has not been confirmed. So where are, uh, the nation's leaders are right now, we're not sure. Uh, of course, uh, we're getting uh, now some, uh, some word from uh, some of the representatives around the country. Uh, Chuck Hagel, a Republican from Nebraska, is uh, says this is the second and I'm quoting now this is the second Pearl Harbor I don't think that I overstate it uh, that's a quote of course he's referring to the attack 60 years ago that surprised the nation right and uh, plunged the US uh, into uh, World War II. well certainly people here in Los Angeles are on the edge of their seats as they are nationwide right now um, here are a few things to give you there before we head to Eric Spillman LA citywide there's been a tactical alert put on they're employing anti-terrorist units all over. Of course, LAX has been evacuated and cordoned off. And Chief Parks is going to hold a meeting at 10 a.m. today to decide how to deal with this thing, as well as the schools. The schools will be in session, although there will not be any extracurricular activities. And we understand that our borders have been closed uh, with Mexico. We're not sure whether the Canadian border has been closed yet. Let's go to Eric Spillman now. Eric? At police headquarters here this morning. Uh, even though there's been no threat here in Los Angeles, nothing's been reported. The city is preparing as if there were an emergency. They want to be ready in case there is an emergency here. Uh, they've activated the Emergency Operations Center, which is down four floors uh, below City Hall here. And that is where all the police and fire department agency heads get together to talk about what is going to happen, how they're going to get ready. Just a few moments ago, we spoke with LAPD Chief Bernard Parks on the way in. And here's what he had to say about this morning's planning. I guess, uh, I guess we don't have that interview. C can we roll that from the truck by chance? All right. Okay. I guess we don't have it ready. Um, basically, what he said was that uh, the department is on tactical alert, which means that the city is deploying all officers it has available right now. People are being kept over, held over from their earlier shifts. Uh, so that there are more resources. As you mentioned, Emmett, the city's uh, 
uh, or the police department's anti-terrorism division. It consists of about 30 or 40 elite officers. They have now been deployed, and it's my understanding that they're checking out potential targets in the Los Angeles area, although, again, we don't know for sure. Uh, we've heard that there haven't been any threats. Other things that are happening here in the downtown Los Angeles area, if we could show you here this morning, is a number of streets have been blocked off. This is the corner of Los Angeles and Temple Street in, uh, in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, you can see it's been shut down. They've barricaded it. This is a street that goes by City Hall East and also by uh, the police department headquarters. So they're keeping all traffic away from here now, uh, not letting cars get into this area. We understand there are a number of streets blocked in the downtown area. The police department headquarters building, Parker Center, has been evacuated this morning. So has uh, a section of City Hall. Uh, many of the doors to City Hall East, at least, have been locked. Uh, they're not letting people in unless they have uh, IDs. A number of the courts, as you mentioned, have been closed uh, today. They're not holding court, uh, some of the uh, superior courts today. And, and also, we've talked uh, again about uh, evacuations of various buildings in downtown Los Angeles. Now I understand we do have that taped interview with Chief Bernard Parks. Let's go to that now. Or, or maybe not. Oh, there we go. Are there any terrorist threats against Los Angeles at this time? We have none that we can report, but we certainly uh, are cognizant of the potential. What does what, what buildings are being evacuated? Uh, division mean, sir? What it means is that we have our resources out looking at the targets that we have concerns right. about and also looking at the issues as it relates to uh, the activities and also uh, particular buildings that we may have concern about. Has any, has any building been evacuated? Uh, we yeah. have not made that decision. We don't know whether individuals have made a decision, but the city has not made one of these. All right, so there the chief is basically uh, restating what the city's preparedness uh, planning is right now. And as you mentioned, Emmett, there's a meeting at 10 o'clock when the chief will get together with all the city officials and fire department officials and talk about uh, what they're going to do for the rest of the day. The emergency operations center is now at level three activation. That's the highest level. It's just getting prepared for anything in case it does happen here. Back to you in the studio. Okay, Eric, I want to I want to mention a few of these things to you now because they may change, and if they do, then perhaps you can update, on, uh, update us on this. Um, by the way, you're watching KTLA Morning News, and this is coverage of the disaster which has happened in New York and in uh, Washington, D.C., and the plane that's gone down near Camp David, which has been so far unattached to these, but we're not quite sure. Okay, Eric, here it is. Um, City Hall evacuated. Right. Arco Building evacuated. Well, we heard reports that that was taking place, yeah. Okay. It's voluntary one of the taller evacuations. buildings in downtown Los Angeles. Right. Wells Fargo Building, voluntary evacuations. Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, all of those shut down. All the federal and state courts have been evacuated in Los Angeles, if I'm not correct, uh, if I'm not incorrect. Right. And that includes downtown. Well, some of the streets are closed. Uh, we'll show you a live picture here again. Uh, this is Los Angeles Street. It's one of the one of the busiest streets in downtown L.A. It's the one that passes in front of various uh, government buildings, including the federal government's INS headquarters downtown here, the police department headquarters, uh, City Hall, the backside of City Hall. It is now shut down. They shut it down about a half an hour ago, and it's creating a, a tremendous traffic jam down here uh, as people are being forced to go in other ways, and a lot of streets are closed here. They don't want to let anyone uh, drive up in front of these public buildings. And so then, they've closed down the streets. And then, Eric, these are the two, these are the things that are open, and this may change too, so please let us know if this changes. Apparently, the L.A. city elections are not going to be canceled, and apparently the schools are still open, save the extracurricular activities. As far as we know. Okay. Eric Spillman live at the scene downtown. We go back now to New York City, where you see the smoke continuing to billow from lower Manhattan, where the terrorist attack took place. Uh, earlier this morning. Now, I have some new information from Nablus on the West Bank uh, and the Palestinian reaction to the attacks this morning. Uh, thousands, I'm reading from the Associated Press uh, report uh, by Mohammed Daragmeg in, uh, in the West Bank, uh, the, in, there in uh, Nablus. Thousands of Palestinians celebrated Tuesday's terror attacks in the United States, chanting, God is great, and distributing candy to passersby, even as their leader, Yasser Arafat, said he was horrified. I continue to read from the AP report. The U.S. government has become increasingly unpopular in the West Bank and Gaza Strip in the past year of Israeli-Palestinian fighting with many Palestinians accusing Washington of siding with Israel. 
In the West Bank town of Nablus, about 3,000 people poured into the street shortly after the attacks on the World Trade Center in New York and government targets in Washington. Demonstrators distributed candy in a traditional gesture of celebration. Several Palestinian gunmen, several Palestinian gunmen uh, shot into the air while other marchers carried Palestinian flags. As you look at people hanging from the windows of the World Trade Center early this uh, morning as people were desperately trying to scramble to safety, uh, unknowing to them that this building would soon be reduced to rubble thousands of feet below. Just a horrible, horrible sight, a horrible thought of what was to come uh, later in the morning. As we look at this videotape, I continue reading from the Associated Press report. While other marchers carried Palestinian flags, Nawel Abdel Fattah, 48 years old, wearing a long black dress, threw sweets in the air saying she was happy because America is the head of the snake. America always stands by Israel in its war against us. And then, of course, uh, you heard Yasser Arafat say here on our air that he was completely shocked, unbelievable, as he described it. He completely condemned this very dangerous attack and conveyed his condolences to the American people. And once now, again, we... we have been, just a second, uh, Emmett, we have been saying that one of the groups that was uh, claiming responsibility, the DFLP, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, they are now denying any involvement in this terrorist attack. Uh, the, uh, the leader of that uh, group, Qais Abdel Rahim, uh, reacting to reports uh, that two Arab satellite stations in the Gulf had received anonymous claims of responsibility. Uh, we did receive that report from Abu Dhabi earlier this morning saying the DFLP had claimed responsibility for this uh, terrible attack and now they are saying they had nothing to do with this attack. However, the Islamic Jihad is still uh, saying that uh, they condemn the United States for their position against Israel. Again, a terrorist expert indicated to us this was a radical, uh, militant uh, wing of, 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 this, uh, of the Palestinians, and Arafat has condemned it. Uh, there's a group of people in the West Bank who are celebrating, but in no, in no way indicates a, a, a general feeling among the Arab nations. There is division among Arab nations uh, throughout the world, uh, Arab people throughout the world as to how this whole situation should be handled. This is clearly the act of terrorists. This is not uh, an act of uh, a nation. This is not an act of terrorism by an Arab nation. This is not an act of terror by any nation. This is a group of, of, of individuals who have masterminded and planned this attack on New York City and Washington against citizens of the United States in retaliation for what they say is the policy of, uh, of the United States against Palestine. So this one group, this militant group, has uh, created this havoc now that, that, that exists in the United States and around the world as a result of this terrorist attack. Important to note because it is, in fact, in the situation, the militant few which have taken the lives of the many. And it's also difficult to get a handle on exactly who to respond to where this is concerned. Uh, even as we spoke to the terrorist expert earlier, he wasn't quite sure exactly what we could do because there is no in fact ransom there is no there's nothing that they want from us other than for us to suffer yeah and so there's no real way to respond to this here you see on your screen as we were looking at some of the pictures this is a graphic uh, graphic of exactly in in sort of an order of what happened this morning um, just before six o'clock American Airlines flight 11 which was going from Boston to LAX with 92 people aboard smashed into Tower 1 of the World Trade Center and it caught fire. Then American Airlines Flight 77 going from Washington, going from Dulles to Los Angeles X with 64 people on board slammed into Tower 2 of the World Trade Center. Both of those towers now demolished and gone. And then a United Airlines flight, Flight 93, which was going from Newark to San Francisco, um, apparently slammed into the Pentagon. A one more flight apparently uh, hit Camp David. We're not sure if that's connected to these. Now we're waiting to get confirmation on exactly uh, the rest of the, uh, the flights that may have been involved in this. As we look at pictures uh, again of the billowing smoke from the Pentagon and at uh, six minutes after nine o'clock here in Los Angeles on KTLA, uh, today can only be described as a national nightmare. Our worst fears realized. Terrorists have used our own commercial airliners as weapons of destruction. Those planes used against us to destroy national landmarks and perhaps kill more than, more than died at uh, Pearl Harbor. September 11, 2001 will live in infamy too, just as December 7, 1941 did.
It's not uh, nuclear destruction, but it is a taste of Armageddon delivered to the people of the United States by enemies we cannot see or name or even possibly identify. It is mass murder and the worst crime in terms of lives lost and property destroyed ever perpetrated on American soil. Carlos, even as we mention this, United Airlines is now saying it's deeply concerned, and I quote them, about a second flight, a Boeing 767 that was headed from Boston to Los Angeles. This is another one. Uh, I mention that as the U.S. has closed its border to Mexico. So here we are, the sovereign nation, the nation without borders, as it were, closing the borders. And perfectly timed, a, a masterminded by, uh, by a group that uh, very well uh, thought through, as a terrorist expert said, only the absolute finest minds in the terrorist community could have carried out such a dastardly crime. There we see the Twin Towers as they appeared to us at about 9 o'clock East Coast time this morning. A single tower, a plane, jet plane full of passengers, slams into the tower in the front. And then another plane, unbelievably slices the second tower in half as you see the plane approach and explosion resulted. In disbelief we watched this morning as the plane slammed into that uh, that building. Then as one can only imagine the fear that uh, that overtook the, the people who were inside the building and wanting to get out of there and knowing that the, there could be destruction. Then moments later another plane crashes into the Pentagon the executive, old executive office building in the foreground with the smoke billowing from the Pentagon as another plane had uh, nosedived into this Pentagon. Then as the buildings were on fire, completely involved in smoke, the tower in the back, one of the two towers, collapses onto itself and crashes to the ground as officers and firefighters are trying to evacuate that building and people from around it. And then as a single solitary tower stood there in, in lower Manhattan with the smoke billowing, it too, weakened from the fire, from the explosion, from the crash, collapsed onto itself and crashing to the ground below as thousands of people down below scurried for safety. This building, this area, covers 16 acres. It is huge. It is an enormous part of lower Manhattan. It is uh, the monument to, to Lower Manhattan. These buildings built in 1973 Just to incredible. much fanfare. A landmark. Terrorists hit one of our landmarks, uh, an American landmark. Thousands and thousands of people working inside. Thousands of people dead this morning as a result of a dastardly terrorist attack. And now a nation is in stunned silence and grieving, afraid, and uh, really the, uh, the terrorists have made their mark, have made their statement, and we're wondering now, what is the next step? The next step immediately for the president, when he arrives in Washington, D.C., where he's headed, not necessarily landing there, but heading there, will be to have a news conference with us and tell us exactly what his plans are going to be to respond to this. Not sure how he'll do that. Even in the wake of that, we've seen all the nation's airports closed, all the federal buildings evacuated. We're talking nationwide now. We're also seeing that all the Major League Baseball games have been canceled. Here at home in Los Angeles, Arco building evacuated, Wells Fargo building evacuated, lots of streets downtown cordoned off, LAX Terminal 4 evacuated. No flights going in or out right now. The streets being cordoned off. Raises the question, what could we possibly have done? It is a sickening feeling to look at, uh, at the pictures there. and You see the, uh, the clouds lingering, the smoke billowing, emergency crews, emergency personnel trying to, to help those who can be helped. And, uh, and now we're getting our first view of uh, the plane crash near Pennsylvania. Uh, we're looking live there at uh, a newscast from, from Pennsylvania. Let's listen to what the newscasters in Pennsylvania are saying about the crash there. The plane crash here in our area it was United 757. We don't know how many people are on board. We have to assume the worst given uh, the pictures we've seen there and the, uh, the accounts of the scene of a crater in the ground and very, very little in the way of debris. Rick Earl just telling us uh, that uh, the largest piece they found is about five, uh, five feet long. There is again shots of uh, New York as the... Okay, we were looking live at a newscast there from um, Pennsylvania. The other uh, aircraft that uh, that crashed. We are continuing to get information from around the country of uh, of what uh, what we know so far, and we do know that now the uh, the entire nation is is 
is fixed on exactly what is happening now and we're trying to get as much information as we can to you about uh, what uh, the next steps will be. Many people have been sent home from work. Emergency crews are on high alert here in Los Angeles and around the country. Our borders are closed uh, with Mexico. Uh, we're not sure what, uh, what the uh, effects on Canada will be. International flights being diverted to Canada and other places. Uh, flights not taking off from Heathrow Airport in London uh, where uh, uh, Tony Blair, uh, the Prime Minister of London, was addressing Parliament, uh, condemning the attack and extending uh, his condolences to the American people and uh, wishing to work in concert with President Bush to get to the bottom of whoever did this and, and whoever was responsible and uh, create uh, whatever it is that they need to do to, to make this uh, go away. You're seeing some of the people now on the stretchers being put into the ambulances. We're not quite sure where this is, but the devastation has been so widespread, so insurmountable that it's hard to imagine that any of these places escaped without some injury. Those planes coming in absolutely unbeknownst to anyone except the hijackers and the crew and the poor people that were aboard those planes when they smashed into both towers of the World Trade Center and then into the Pentagon and then another into a place called Shanksville near Pennsylvania near Camp David. Uh, you worked in Boston before you worked here and uh, the flight from Boston, uh, the time that it takes to go from Boston to New York is what, about 15 minutes? From Boston to New York, to New York. I, I never actually made that flight, it's, but I would imagine it's got to be a very short flight. It's a short flight, and it, it usually would be done on a small commuter plane. Those are smaller. That flight was on its way from Boston to Los Angeles, so one can only assume that 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 hijacking took place uh, in rapid succession. The plane took off from Boston, uh, it was hijacked, and then and then the uh, and commandeered by the hijacker, the plane was then directed to hit the building. It hit the building. Then another flight from New York itself took off. Again, a, a, a quick hijacking, uh, suicide obviously, uh, took over the plane, slammed into the second tower. So these were very well coordinated, well timed out uh, terrorist Absolutely. attacks. Absolutely. And in the wake of what's happened with the, with the tragedy, I, I mean, I'm, I'm literally shaking from what I'm seeing here. The only hope I have is that they did it, if it were coordinated in such a way that it was coordinated, they did it in rapid succession like this so that it would subvert our energies to be able to shut down their ability to do it, which means that now that we're on alert, I'm only hoping that perhaps the worst is over. I'm not understating this at all, but uh, let me just uh, indicate to you that we have seen military jets scrambling over uh, the air in, in New York City, over Washington, D.C. We see military aircraft uh, all along the, uh, the eastern seaboard, and now we have word that the, uh, uh, the Navy has gotten involved, the, the USS JFK and the USS George Washington. Uh, are now in position on the East Coast uh, at the ready uh, to defend the, the nation against any more terrorist attack. It seems as if containment is the word for now. And then after containment, we'll find out from the president exactly what he plans to do. In the wake of that, JPL, we have to tell you, and Warner Brothers here at home are closing down as well. It's tough to do business as usual when you consider what has happened here. And uh, there's much to be... Uh, much to be told uh, throughout the day and when you consider that you've got uh, uh, network programs that uh, are going to be on today that uh, will more, no doubt be canceled. Celebrations, concerts, uh, there will be uh, uh, festivities and things that will be completely done away with as a result of all eyes being fixed on this. Baseball and, games. And baseball games as you indicated have also been uh, canceled and uh, all we can see is the, the remain of what uh, what is left there as, as a result of a terrorist act in New York City as we look at this picture again. We are having a tough time uh, getting uh, information from New York City as a lot of the communications there has been uh, knocked down. We've had a lot of trouble getting uh, clear, clear video. Uh, the towers that were on top of the World Trade Center were used yeah, by army. our station WPIX and other stations there in New York City to get the signals back to us. So uh, we're fortunate to just have the uh, the single, the single shot that we have now. Senator Ted Kennedy from Massachusetts is now addressing. Last minutes, and our hearts reach out to all of those who have suffered, lost their lives, and are injured uh, right now. And all of us reach out as Americans to the brave rescue workers that are attempting to help our fellow citizens. We, uh, out of respect for those uh, efforts, have. Uh, postponed our uh, hearing uh, this morning. Uh, we underline the point that it is uh, postponed. We are not going to see the business of America uh, deferred because of terrorism. 
uh, whether it's in education or in any area of uh, public uh, policy. We're looking forward to hearing uh, from the, uh, the First Lady <coughs> on a subject matter which is of central concern to uh, all families in this uh, country. And because of her experience and her leadership, uh, this committee and the Congress and the American people would have benefited greatly uh, from her comments. And we will look forward to an early reappearance by the First Lady for this committee on the subject of uh, early education. And Mrs. Bush, we recognize. Uh, you heard from the President this morning, and Senator Kennedy and Senator Gregg and I both uh, join his statement in saying that our hearts and our prayers go out to the victims of this act of terrorism and that uh, our support goes to the rescue workers. Um, and all of our prayers are with everyone there right now. Thank you. You know, children are kind of struck by all this. Is there a message you could tell to the nation's... Well, parents need to reassure their children everywhere in our country that they're safe. I wish to join with uh, Senator Kennedy and the First Lady in expressing uh, deep sorrow and concern for the families who suffered injury as a result of this event. And I wish to reinforce the point that Senator Kennedy made, which, which this hearing is being postponed and the business of this country will go forward. Uh, we are a resilient nation. Acts like this are inexcusable. They're criminal. But the fact is that we as a nation can overcome them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shortly after this uh, tape was uh, shot this morning, the Capitol was evacuated, and uh, Mrs. Bush, uh, her, her whereabouts now are, are unknown. Her, her husband, obviously, is on his way to an undisclosed location uh, to take command of the situation and try to assess and, and uh, figure out what to his response will be. Joining me now is Hal Fishman. Uh, thank you, Carlos. Uh, perhaps I bring a little different perspective uh, in view of the fact that I've been standing apart and watching this uh, all morning long. I just arrived here at the studio, and uh, as you watch on our screen, as you can see what's happening in the lower part of Manhattan in New York City, I think that a few observations need to be made. Number one, this is not just a band of outlaws or a bunch of terrorists that is committing this. These people have to exist in a certain area. They have to have support from some government or or powerful entity somewhere. If it is Osama bin Laden, he is being supported by the Taliban in Afghanistan. Uh, consequently, this is also an operation that does not take place haphazardly. What you're, what you're viewing is something that has to take place with a tremendous amount of planning to hijack aircraft, to commit this kind of act, is something that took a lot of planning. And I think that it is something that we also are lacking. Why did we not know anything about this? Why is it that we were totally unprepared? And I think that these are questions that will be raised in retrospect after we deal with the very serious situation of the casualties that have taken place here. Let's remember also that President uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, said on December the 8th, 1941, after the Japanese Empire attacked Pearl Harbor, he said it is a day that will live in infamy. This is also a day that will live in infamy. And in many ways, this is worse than the attack on Pearl Harbor. The attack on Pearl Harbor was directed primarily against military installations. This is an attack that was directed against innocent American citizens, innocent civilians working in office buildings, we don't know how many thousands of people may have been killed. And those people who were on board those jetliners that ran into the building were innocent American civilians. Consequently, this is a day that really will live in infamy. We're looking live again at uh, the cloud and smoke over uh, lower Manhattan. As we look at tape of the devastation that uh, was wreaked by the uh, the terrorist attack. Not much left of uh, the World Trade Center. And, and uh, 
Firefighters going through the rubble looking for survivors. In a desperate attempt to find uh, those who might have survived uh, this horrible, uh, dastardly attack. Uh, Carl, so we want to uh, take a look at the videotape. Um, you're going to see it coming up of the plane crashing into the building. As you can see, it's a twin-engine, wide-body aircraft. It comes in very low. It strikes approximately at the 85th floor of the structure. You can see it hitting right there. And the explosion, of course, that's in slow motion, what you're looking at uh, at that time. It raises the question of what was going on on board that jetliner. And uh, I think there is no doubt about the fact that the plane was flown not by, I would guess was flown not by the pilot of that airplane. They were probably overpowered uh, shortly before the plane hit the building. And I think that plane was probably steered into the building by the terrorists on board or those who hijacked the aircraft. Because you must realize that no captain of a jetliner would intentionally take that plane and steer it directly into that building. Now, there was one report from the FAA that the plane was diverted, it took off from Boston, it was diverted to New York International Airport. And the approach path to New York International Airport would put them roughly off uh, Manhattan there, if they're coming in for one of the runways. Right. And um, uh, then suddenly the plane diverted and hit the building. That's why I tend to think that it was not an airline uh, captain or personnel that was in command of that aircraft, but it was probably the terrorist who flew that plane. I think the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania, for example, was probably still under the control of the captain who was probably fighting to control that aircraft. And uh, in this particular case, this tragedy is of such enormous dimensions that I think... Um, it's going to take a long, long time uh, before we figure out exactly what happened and how many people were killed in this uh, situation. And that's an area that you just pointed out uh, to make a sudden turn. A, se a 757 or a 767, how long would it take a jet of that size to make a sudden turn and veer into a building? Well, it would only take a matter of moments. Really? Yeah, literally a matter of moments. And uh, there are questions also being raised about the aircraft that crashed into the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. uh, that plane uh, evidently was diverted and uh, under the command of uh, terrorists, and they crashed that plane in, into the Pentagon. Now, there are F-16s at this moment flying over Washington, D.C. They're flying air cover. Uh, you never would have thought that you would see something like this uh, over the United States of America. Uh, and it, even in the, uh, the early days of World War II, you didn't see uh, th that taking place. There were some planes that were put up for defensive purposes, but uh, nothing like this. We understand from CNN that, uh, of course, one would expect this as a result of the catastrophic collapse of two enormous buildings in lower Manhattan, that it would have a uh, collateral effect on other structures around. And we do have reports of other buildings collapsing in the lower Manhattan area. Uh, all of uh, that lower Manhattan area has for all intents and purposes, been evacuated. Uh, fire officials have been down there for the better part of two hours trying to clear as many people out of there. Uh, obviously, they're, they're searching for, for uh, survivors in, this, in these uh, collapses that are going on down there. Continuing uh, reports of explosions uh, going on down there as uh, I'm sure gas lines have been ruptured, other things, electrical fires, uh, electrical explosions as well. But uh, complete and utter chaos in lower Manhattan as uh, the effects of the collapse of the Twin Towers is being fully felt this morning uh, in lower Manhattan. I presume you, you have uh, informed our viewers about the fact that there is no air traffic, literally, yes. in, in, in America. And that includes all kinds of aircraft. Uh, for example, we're not exactly sure of the kinds of planes that uh, are still in the air and unaccounted for. There could be a business jet. It could be a, a light plane like mine, for example. All aircraft have been grounded so that uh, there are no planes uh, in the skies at, uh, at this time that could run into a building. When, if ever, has this happened, uh, the, the absolute clearing of all airspace in the United States? Well, I don't think it has ever. It has ever happened, and uh, it's a, a situation that is unprecedented in our time. Uh, even in World uh, War II, uh, we did not uh, see such a, an event 
as this taking place. And as you can see, the, uh, the, the, the rescue operations, uh, this is uh, a search and rescue operation that's going to take a long, long time before it's resolved. But the most significant thing is, and I think we have to face the reality, that this attack was a successful attack against the United States, just as Pearl Harbor was a successful attack in its own right. We suffered a defeat. We have to face the reality that we are suffering a defeat at this time. Did you ever think that you would see New York looking uh, like this, as London did in the Blitz in World War II? The skyline of New York is now forever changed with the World uh, Trade Center both totally collapsed. And um, this is really unprecedented. You mentioned the Taliban and uh, perhaps uh, Libya and other nations may, may be irresponsible. Uh, the retaliatory effect of this will certainly be measured uh, very precisely by the White House, by the allies in Europe. Uh, will those targets be hit? Well, I, I think there's no doubt about the fact that if we find out that this is, let's hypothetically say, and the odds are that it's probably a pretty good guess that Osama bin Laden was behind this, uh, he has said that this is what he was going to do. He said there's going to be an unprecedented attack against America and its interests. He said this as recently as a few days ago. And um, I think that if it is proven that he is behind this and that the uh, Taliban regime, that extremist regime in Afghanistan, was behind it, this is an act of war yeah. against the United States uh, by this organization and by the groups that are backing the organization. Uh, consequently, I think that you will see a retaliatory uh, strike, or perhaps uh, worse, uh, by the United States. I think also what you're finding is that all the democratic governments uh, of the uh, Western nations are now rallying and saying that more must be done to stop this kind of terrorism, this kind of act. But short of uh, placing an anti-aircraft gun on top of the... Uh the World Trade Centers, there would have been very little to have been able to do, even the best intelligence. Uh, this was kept uh, from our best intelligence sources, and it would have been tough to predict. Now, I understand that uh, perhaps we have uh, New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. Is that true? Do we have that? Do we have Mayor Rudy Giuliani? I, I heard that in my Mr. ear. Mr. Mayor, I'm not my sure. colleague Jeff Greenfield is, uh, is, is with us uh, uh, also, Jeff. Mr. Mayor, in terms of, you've already said that you want Lower Manhattan evacuated, you want everybody else to go about their business. Are there specific instructions that you want to communicate right now to yes, the, the, police, the, the, fire, everybody else? Well, the police and fire are, are there, and they're there in large, large numbers, and, they're, and they are, first of all, trying to, trying to get into the, the, the rubble and the debris to save as many people as possible. We also have thousands of police officers in Lower Manhattan, and what we want people to do is to leave Lower Manhattan, if they can, on their own. Just the, to walk. Sorry. To walk. I, I, I just talked to the to Dick Grasso, who runs the stock exchange, and we have a lot of police there. They have 3,000 people there. We're going to walk them out. We're walking them uh, east and then north, which is essentially the way I, I uh, walked out. I walked, I was right below the World Trade Center when it collapsed, and then we walked up to Greenwich Village. People should walk out of Lower Manhattan, get above Canal Street, uh, for safety reasons, but for a second reason. We need people out of there so we can get thousands of ambulances in and out over the course of the next lives we're going to be able to save. Mr. Mayor, are the subways operating? The subways are operating outside of Manhattan. Outside the of Manhattan. subways have remained open, and we've worked with the, uh, the chancellor to try to make certain that the schools will remain open for as long as they have. Seven, Washington, Dulles to LA International, 64 people on board. United Airlines Flight 175, Boston to LA International, 65 people on board. And United Airlines Flight 93, Newark to San Francisco, 45 people on board. That adds up, just a quick look here, at 266 passengers and crew killed in just those, uh, just those flights. Just aboard the aircraft. Yeah. Yeah, if, you have any, um, if you would like to call United Airlines, if you have any question about family or friends, there's a toll-free number. You can call 1-800-932-8555. That's United Airlines and American Airlines, 1-800-245-0999. Nine. Well, uh, uh, yeah. before, yeah. uh, December 7th, 1941, that's December 8th, actually, 
when uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt declared that a day of infamy, December 7th. Uh, and at that time, there was uh, somebody to retaliate against. Uh, there was a sense of helplessness here, at least for the moment, in that we don't really know precisely whom is responsible for this, so there is really nobody to direct our anger and our wrath at, but believe me, our anger and our wrath will be directed towards someone because this is a dastardly attack on the people of the United well, States. Let, let's of remember also that this took place only about four hours ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will find out who was responsible for this. It's not just a band of fanatics, as I mentioned before. It's a group of well-organized, highly disciplined terrorists backed by some major organization, whether it's a state a government or a nation, uh, we'll, we will find out exactly where these people came from and uh, who is behind this. And the, what highlights the fanaticism even more, as you pointed out a moment ago, is that we can be almost absolutely certain that an American airline captain did not voluntarily fly those planes into those objects. Those controls were taken over by somebody else. They were taken over by, in essence, suicide pilots. Yeah, that's exactly